What is social media addiction and what is technology addiction? Is it even a thing? Well, in this video, you'll hear from clinical social worker Craig Nippenberg as he shares the facts on addiction in the digital age. Hey, it's Clint with Sandstone Care where we help teens, young adults, and their families overcome challenges that come with substance abuse, addiction, and mental health conditions. All right, let's get right to it. Now, in terms of addiction, they have an intermittent gaming disorder uh, in the diagnostic manual. They don't really have anything for social media, but I would lump those together. Uh, and they're still technically haven't declared an official addiction. Although I want to read the nine qualifiers to show that that would say your kid is having a problem uh, with either gaming or social media. So and, and when, when you hear these for the parents out there, you're going to be like, yep. 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 <laughs> so first one is a preoccupation with, with a, a particular game or with your TikTok or Snapchat, whatever. Um, right now for the, the younger kids, Roblox is just this obsession. They're all obsessed with Roblox. Um, withdrawal symptoms when you're not on it. Uh, the big one, and I'll explain to the brain later, uh, is when you stop playing, you see this this moodiness and irritability that, that goes on for an hour or two uh, when they're not on the device. Uh, increased time usage. Well, they all increase their time during COVID and they all want more. I've not, I've never met a kid yet that came to see me and he said, you know, I've been telling my parents I want less gaming time. <laughs> the number one argument with families right now is more time. That's all they want. Uh, failed attempts to control the use. Now I've only, that's more your older, your, your college age, mid twenties, the only kids I've seen who have come to me to say, I want to try to control my addiction or my, my habits, um, because they're seeing all their buddies graduating from college and getting real jobs and getting married. And they're still at home on the device, smoking pot and, and gaming or doing social media. Um, but the younger ones, I haven't seen many of them really want to like stop or control it. Uh, uh, number five, a, de a decreased interest in past hobbies. And I've seen that with numerous kids who had, you know, they went to different camps, sports, arts, baking camp, and all they want to do now is stay home and, and be on the devices. Uh, continued use, even, you know, even though you're having uh, what are called psychosocial problems, that could be school struggle, academic problems because you're doing too much of the other stuff. Uh, it could be problems with your family, right? Or, or I got kids who get in fights with their friends over some game they're playing. And, and they will go on for days and you're like, guys, this is not reality. This is fantasy land. Um, deceiving the family, number seven. That the, I got kids who are sneaking into their parents' bedroom at night. So, you know, the parents are doing the things I recommend. They put the chargers in their bedroom, right? I've had a couple of kids sneaking in their parents' bedroom in the middle of the night to grab their phone or, or their gaming device. Um, so lots of deception. I had one kid who actually hid his sister's laptop. Uh, so in case his parents took his, then he could use hers. <laughs> like, oh man, leave your sister alone. Um, uh, number eight, using uh, the devices to escape negative feelings. Uh, these devices do bring pleasure uh, to the brain. Uh, and many times when you're not feeling so great, then you use it to escape from those negative feelings. Now with social media, there's a lot of negative feelings that happen with social media. Uh, and then negative life consequences. So again, failing school, poor grades, disruption in the family. So if you look at those nine things, we've just described 90% of the kids in America. I don't know statistically, but they've, they're all struggling a lot with it. Now, does that qualify as a true, you know, medical addiction that I'll let you answer that one. But um, you do see the withdrawal piece uh, when they're not on it. Interesting enough, if, if the parents I've had so many parents tell me if they take it away for a week or two, their kids back to normal. And, and we saw that with our own daughter. We, we took the phone for a while. We just couldn't take it anymore. And it was like she returned. If you want to learn more about treatment options for you, your teen or young adult, then tell us about your situation on a confidential call using the number linked up in the description box below or live chat with us at sandstonecare.com. We'll connect you with the treatment that you need. And if we're not the right fit, we'll get you where you need to go. 
Be well and remember that change is possible.